Jesus came and preached the kingdom. His core message was the kingdom of God. And the average Christian has no concept of what the kingdom is. Today, we're going to research the scriptures and find out what the kingdom of God is. Welcome again to this edition of Kingdom Rest. Today we're going to be talking about how God loves us. I want to just share with you the reality of God in a Christian's life. If you're a Christian, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're not a Christian, maybe you don't have any idea of the fact that one of the things Jesus came he came and said, my peace I give unto you, my peace I leave with you. The peace of God the Bible talks about says it passes all understanding. God's peace in times of turmoil and trouble and disturbance can be in your heart. The external world can be total turmoil. But when you have Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, living and dwelling in you, you can be at peace. And today, that's one of the things I'd like to talk about is because the reason that we can have this peace is because God loves us. He loves us with an amazing love and kindness. God loved us before we loved Him. In fact, the scripture says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why did Christ die for us? Because he loved us. It's very simple. We don't know why. We don't know the details. And don't believe people that tell you they do because we don't know why God loves us. God loves us with a love that's absolutely wonderful. Okay? He gave himself for us so that we could be the children of God. The Father had a son, Jesus. And he asked Jesus to come and be a sacrifice so that he could have more sons. Now, we all understand that if I take a seed of corn and plant it in the ground, that corn will grow up and it'll produce, under ideal situations, it'll produce more corn, okay? Jesus was planted in the ground after the crucifixion as the Son of God. And out of that, when he arose from the dead, he brought with him millions and millions more Christian sons of God. This thing about God loving us, he was willing to go to the point of sacrificing his son for us. Now, you say, man, that sounds far-fetched. Well, it may be at first, but look at the stars. Look at the trees that grow. Look at the wind that blows. Look at the universe. Look into the heavens. Look at the moon, look at the sun. Well, don't look directly at the sun, but look at the sun. And guess what God will do? He will show you that in all the creation, there was a mind, a brilliance that developed and comprehended. A few moments ago, I was looking at all the different plants. There are trees. Some trees grow cylindrical, pine trees. Other trees spread out. They have different leaves. They have different bark. They have different things, elements where they live. This, and if you can believe this is an accident, you've got more faith than any Christian I know. Because the fact is, an intelligent being created this world. And the question comes to, why would he do it? He did it because he wants man to choose to love him. That's the whole purpose of the universe. Go back and look, it, for, and look at it. From Genesis to Revelation, we see the love of God expressed and his idea, 
The Bible says if you give, you'll receive. He gave his love so that he could receive our love. That's what the whole purpose of Christianity is. It's a story of love. It's the greatest love story ever told. It's the story of the Almighty God willing to take us who are made out of the elements of the earth, put his spirit in us, and have us love him. And in that love, he will love us. And the Bible says, you know, we've all heard about going to heaven and how wonderful heaven is. Well, let me tell you what. That is a product of God's love for us. That's why that God says we're to love one another because he loved us. He loved us while we were sinners. He loved us while we didn't even know about him, like him, or care about him. This, this God that we talk about, he's not a God of anger or vengeance. He's a God of love. Now, if you choose to cross him, he can become a God of anger and vengeance. But until you do, if you will do what he says and you will allow him to minister to you and through you, the love of God will fill your heart and he will be happy with you. You'll be happy with him. The scriptures tell us, you know, like we're not to steal. Why? Because that violates love. When Jesus came on earth, the Jews, you know, he started a covenant with the Jews so he could get into the earth and do what he had to do. And he came to the Jews and they said, he given the law of Moses. Well, there were 615 or something like that laws that the Jews came up with, which is just beyond anybody ever hoping to keep them. But what Jesus did, they came to him and said, what's the greatest commandment? He said, the first commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, body, person, that's what our God wants. That we're commanded to love him. And then he said the second commandment is like it. We're to love our neighbor as ourself. Now if you can keep those two commandments, you're keeping all the law that God gave the Jews. Where he said don't steal. One thing it said, if you've got a survey stake out there on your property, and there's nobody around, you might have a real temptation. Put that stake up and move it over here. Now, GPS today, they'd catch you. But back when God wrote that, it was just not love because only greed would want you to take away from your neighbor so you would have more. The whole issue of God's story is one of love and kindness and compassion. You know, God created the Garden of Eden and it was a beautiful place. It was a perfect place. There was no sickness, no disease, there was no anger. There was no vengeance. There was no covetousness. There was nothing that today we would call sin. There was only the love of God and the Father coming down and walking with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And this was God's plan for mankind. God told man to go out and take dominion over the earth and to spread that love and compassion and kindness across the world, across the earth. And who was there to resist it? It was Satan. He was there in the garden. Long story about how he got there, and we're not going to go into it in this issue, but we will talk about it at other times. But Satan was there, and God wanted the love of God to overwhelm Satan and the power and the authority of God that God had given man to win the battle. So God loved man. He died for man. He's prepared a heavenly place for us. Let me give you an example of the whole story of Jesus Christ. And it can be captured in the idea of a Jewish wedding, a very formal Jewish wedding ceremony. Years ago, when a Jew, a man, a Jewish man, became of age, the father would pick him a bride. 
And of course, I'm sure the son agreed to it, but he would pick a bride and he would begin to build a house on the father's place so that he and his bride could move into it. And at a certain point, he'd go see the bride and he would take gifts to give to the bride's father and these gifts would be a blessing. So he'd take all these gifts and give them to the bride's father and they'd make a contract that the groom would come back for the bride. And, you know, today we think, you know, if you don't fall in love with somebody, yak, yak, but yet you read back in the Old Testament and still today where marriages are chosen by the parents, there most times the man and the wife love one another. They come to a place of love and compassion toward one another. But here the groom would be sent to the bride. He'd bring a gift and then he'd go back to his father's house to build a home for he and his bride. And when the father came and decided the time, he had sent the groom. And this was a big deal with the Jews because you didn't know when the groom was coming. So the bride constantly was ready for the groom to come and snatch her away. Let's compare that to the story of Jesus. God chose man to be the bride of Christ. It's what the church is called. We're called the bride of Christ. So God chose us to be the bride of Christ. And the Father sent the Son, and the Son came and brought us a gift. And that gift through his own body was eternal life. That's a gift that he brought to us, salvation, deliverance from sickness, sin, and disease, what a gift he brought to the bride. And then the bride, it says he returns and goes back to his father. Jesus went back to heaven. And we still have that gift of grace and mercy being operated today. The goodness of God being shown to us today. So God goes, Jesus goes back to the father. And what did he tell his disciples? He said, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, in my father's house, that's on the father's property, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I'd have told you. So Jesus, like the bride in the Jewish tradition, has gone back and he's preparing a dwelling place for us, his bride. And at a certain point, the father is going to say to the son, Son, go get your bride. And we, like the Jewish people, are to be alert and ready to receive the son coming back. And what they do when they went home, the first thing they do, they went to a wedding feast, the marriage supper. And that's what God is wanting to do with us, is to take us back. Jesus is going to come for his bride and take us back and we'll have this wonderful reception to be loved and brought into the family of God. Now that's a part of the love story. The love story is this. God gave his only son for us so that he could have many sons. People, if you're going to understand God, you've got to have a heart of love and compassion. Jesus showed his love he was moved with compassion and he healed the people. <coughs> Pardon me. Today, we have to have that compassion, that kindness, that heart of love toward other people. You know, we see all the evil in the world and the things that Satan is doing and has done, but it's up to us to be the examples of the love of God. God has a great love toward us, and it's up to us to share that love with others. We love him because the Bible said he first loved us, and we can love God. The Bible talks about, it says, the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts 
by the Holy Spirit that's been given to us. If you're a Christian and the Holy Spirit is in you, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. So don't tell me you can't love people because the Word of God says you can. It's a choice you make. We must walk in love and in grace and in mercy. And when people hear about Jesus, that's really the first thing they should hear is that God loved us so much that he died for us. Now this is where we're at. Jesus came and gave us love and compassion. And why do we, people say, well, I don't believe in divine healing. You know what divine healing is? It's where God heals people. Why? Because he loves us. It was not God's plan for man to be sick and afflicted and broke and hungry and helpless. It was God's plan that we live like Adam and Eve did in the garden. All they had to do was just tend the garden. I mean, that was, what a life. And Jesus, God would come down and talk with them in the cool of the evening. And in Malachi, the third chapter, God said, I am God and I change not. From Genesis all the way through Revelation, it's God's plan that he have fellowship with man. He's exalted man above the angels. Oh, we talk about the angels of God and we think they're wild. But guess what? God gave us authority and dominion in the earth so we could walk as little gods and our whole purpose is to show the love of God to the world. If you're a Christian and people can't see the love of God in you, there's something wrong. Because it's like I quoted earlier. The Bible says God is love. There's no variation there. God said he doesn't change. He said, I'm God and I change not. Hebrews 13, 8 says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. God and Jesus don't change. And what they're all about is a love for mankind. And they loved us enough, those of you that are Christians, they've forgiven your sin, they've reconciled you back to God, they've done everything that was needed, and now your job is to go out and share with other people God loves me. He loves you. The whole world is waiting to hear the story of the fact that God loves us. So many of us are so blessed. Maybe you live in a country where things are not good. Maybe you're surrounded by things that are evil. But you can still know the love of God. You can feel the love of God. And you can allow God's love to be manifest in and through you. All you've got to do is just open your heart and let the power and the grace of God minister. And when you talk to people, you say, well, I don't know how to witness for Jesus. Tell them God loves them. Duh. Most people don't know that. Just tell them, hey, man, God loves you. I love you and God loves you. Now today you got to be careful when you're telling somebody else you love them. But you should say, in God I love you. Through God I love you. Because of God I love you. You can say all these things and then you show your love and your, your kindness. You show your compassion. The Bible talks about Jesus. He was walking in Judea one time. And he looked at all the people and he said they were like sheep that had no shepherd. I don't know if you've ever been around sheep, but out here in West Texas, we've got some sheep and they're truly as dumb as people say they are. I mean, they just wander around circles. They don't, they don't really know what's going on. But he called us, God referred to us as sheep. Well, there's a reason he did. Because most of us are the same way. We're just dumb, wandering around in circles. But here's the thing. God loved his sheep. He's the good shepherd. 
And all you have to do is share with people that love that God has for you. They'll come to God when they understand his love. You know, the Bible, it's, it's not the preaching hellfire brimstone gets people saved. It says it's the love of God that draws men to repentance. When you love God and you realize that he loves you, you'll humble your heart and you'll come to him. Understanding the fact <coughs> that there is a God that loves you with this absolutely amazing love is something of a revelation to many people. And what's tragic is that should be the main thing that we know about God is he loved us and he gave himself for us. <coughs> Pardon me, it was a gift. It was a gift of God that was given to us. The life of Jesus Christ was given to us. Why? Because he loved us. Because God loved us, he gave. When you love, you'll give. When you see somebody on the street that needs money and you have money, if you have love and compassion, you may help them. Not saying you always will, but sometimes you will because you'll know to. God loves us and he wants us to walk in love and especially toward other Christians. God hates backbiting, lying. In fact, in Proverbs, it lists several times. Six things does the Lord hate and the seventh are an abomination to him. And it's a proud look, a lying eye, a haughty spirit. Pride, if you have pride, you're in trouble because Satan's original sin was pride. And if you have pride, you can't have love because they're diametrically opposed. They're polar opposites. Pride lifts you up. You love yourself. True love, you give of yourself and you have compassion and mercy. God calls us to walk in love and be lovers. The Bible tells us we're to be compassionate. Once again, I was talking about Jesus when I started the story about the sheep. He was walking out there and he saw all these people and they didn't like sheep with no shepherd. And Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus being moved with compassion. He had that love and that compassion in his heart that went out to these poor, miserable people. And that love and that compassion that went out in his heart ministered to those people and they were healed. People, it's all about love. If you claim to be a Christian, walk in love. Somebody makes you mad, forgive them. That's part of walking in love. The Bible tells us that if you can't forgive your neighbor, God won't forgive you. That's pretty steep. You have to forgive. Why? Because bitterness in your heart means there is no forgiveness. There's no love. There's no compassion. Get a picture of what a Christian should be. They should be a person that is strong you know, I'll tell you what, the Bible says love never fails. You may think love's weak. No, it wins. It never fails. The Bible says God is love. Do you think God's weak? No. Love and weakness don't go together. Love and compassion and kindness and tenderness, they go together to forgive others, to be compassionate, to be kind-hearted, Tender-hearted toward one another, the Bible teaches us. Just break down that barrier that you've got. Why it's there, you've put that up to protect yourself. Break that down and let the love of God flow out of you. Let the compassion of God flow in you. As we said earlier, the Bible says we know that the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that was given to us. So people, it's up to you. You've been given that, but it's up to you to use it. It's up to us to love. Love is a choice of our will. We can either be angry, uptight, mean, vicious, 
or we could walk in love. When somebody says something against you, pray for them. Don't go tell your neighbor. You know what that sorry sucker said? You know, that's the compassion of God. People, understand love and mercy are the foundations of Christianity. Compassion and kindness is what Christianity is all about. Father, I just pray for the people that are watching that you show your love toward them. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. I grew up in a, in a Christian home and uh, actually was at church camp. I was about nine years old whenever I first came to know the Lord. God had, um, had a purpose and a plan, which he, he knows that for everybody in their life. And um, I think the devil, even at a young age, was trying to, to stop that. I went through um, multiple uh, physical injuries as a, as a child from, uh, gosh, being kicked in the head by a horse at two years old and um, having a lot of damage done to my head. and. Uh, God just spared my life and, and kept me here and also about um, probably nine years old I was hit by a car and lived through that and God just kept kept keeping me here and um, you know you try to uh, share Jesus everywhere you go and with everybody no matter at what age and um, anyway just multiple things happening um, I uh, had multiple surgeries through my childhood and uh, God just kept, kept me here and kept me pulling through everything. Um, getting into college, I had a, a horse accident and um, what, had this whole side of my face crushed in and had some surgeries and a jaw broken. And, um, you know, God just continued to, to pull me through different injuries through my life. You know, after college, I met my husband. God called us to start a church. And, you know, you kind of see... Uh, before why you go through what you go through. Um, started a church some some years later into our marriage and uh, God just has used us and, and grown us. And so um, I would just like to say whatever you go through, uh, everybody goes through different things and um, has different struggles and is persecuted in different ways and uh, physically goes through things that challenge your faith. But I would just encourage you, never lose faith and never lose hope and uh, in Christ and know that everything you go through, it's, it's to strengthen you and to grow you and for you to be able to minister to somebody else about something that they might be going through. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's all kinds of different challenges in this world and uh, we, all, we all go through different things, but there's only one answer. There's only one, one, one thing that can pull you through all of that and that's your hope in Jesus Christ. So I just would say make sure that you keep God as your focus and um, don't ever doubt what goes on in your life and, and just keep the faith and keep your hope in Him because no matter what you go through, um, He's your rock. So just um, keep your faith in Jesus no matter what, no matter what comes at you. You've been watching Kingdom Rest.